Hey everybody, welcome to the latest ramen video in this ramen series from Japan by Food. I'm your host Frank and I am now in the glitzy and glamorous area of Ginza in Tokyo. This place has a lot of fancy things that you can buy. This is not an area you'd think there'd be a lot of, let's say, great ramen shops, but that is not the case. You've got to actually dig past the glitzy surface and you'll find a lot of great ramen. And I'm going to be introducing one of my favorite ramen shops and according to some people, maybe it's at the top of the Ginza ramen heap. This place is called Kazami and they do ramen with sake leaves. Let's go! Alright, so I'm here in Kazami have my ticket machine here where I'm going to be making my ramen selections and right above the ticket machine there's a handy little menu here too if you're not sure what to get. I'm going to be uh, making my recommendations but here at the top you can see there's Japanese as well as English, very easy to understand. Money in first. As is often the case with what I recommend, top left you can't go wrong, I'm going to be pushing just that which is their signature uh, sake leaves ramen. So I'll get one of those. I'm going to be grabbing a second one as well. This one has a completely different soup. It's seasoned with salt, basically more of a straight up fish soup. I'll talk about those differences a little bit later. Second ramen there, and we are good to go. Two very different ramen underneath the same roof. Yeah, so it's very cool. Basically, the owner here was talking about, I think, the concept behind uh, the ramen shop to have something that, let's say, represented Kyoto, delicate uh, sort of elegance that Kyoto has. You definitely feel that on the inside here. The way that the ramen is presented, it definitely is making use of, I think, Japanese ingredients. Uh, wa is uh, an important word here. Wa basically describes all things Japanese. And lastly, I was asking if there are really any other ramen shops that make ramen with sake leaf. In Tokyo, this is likely the only shop that does this. So you can't get this ramen anywhere else, in other words. All right, and here is my ramen. Their famous rich sake lees ramen. Mask off. Starting with the soup. And this is a really thick soup, as you can see. In Japanese, they say torori, and I think that describes consistency very well. Beautifully thick. Now, the first magical sip. Oh yeah, that's good. With that first sip, I got a lot of negi. So I got crunchy negi, uh, adding to some of the sweetness that is already there coming from that soup. Now the soup is rich, um, thick and rich, let's say. That creaminess comes from chicken bones and pork bones, but there's also a fish accent coming from shellfish, actually. And of course, the sake leaves on top of that is the main source of sweetness. It's such an interesting flavor. Or if you've had amazake before, this is basically a sweetly flavored drink because sake leaves are basically the byproduct from sake production. So you've got these uh, strong notes of sake. There's really probably no other ramen out there like this. Very unique. Let's move on to the noodles. Okay, noodle time. Let's do this. Wonderfully chewy noodles leaning more towards the thicker side. And I think that's a very appropriate choice with that thicker broth. Delicious, delicious. All right, moving on to toppings. And we got quite a bit here to showcase. First of all, we'll start with the chashu pork. We got two slices. They're both uh, different cuts and also prepared differently. We have one that is uh, low temperature uh, cooked and the other one, I believe, is a little bit more uh, traditional, old school. But I'm gonna start with one of these guys here. That was delicious. And I think this one's gonna be softer. This one, though, I believe is the low temperature cooked one, and you can already see texture-wise, it's a little bit softer. Let's see how that goes. This one, I feel like you get a little bit more of that fattiness, and it's beautifully soft because of that low temperature preparation. Now for the other toppings, we have komatsuna, or let's just call it Japanese spinach. We also have mitsuba. This is very refreshing. For the other toppings, we also have seaweed here and egg. And I have half of a beautiful soft boiled egg here. This one is extra jammy in the center. You can see how soft it is when I'm picking it up. 
It's almost like I'm making it have a smiley face as I, uh, as I eat it. Nice and gooey texture, and I think that really goes well with that, uh, that creamy rich soup. Bottoms up. There's also uh, little bits of togarashi uh, pepper, uh, shredded, let's say, uh, pepper slice bits. And uh, yeah, these provide just a little bit of heat. Nothing crazy, but just enough. One of the most unique toppings, if not the most unique toppings, is aburage. This is basically fried tofu. You don't see this in ramen. And this aburage is actually from Niigata Prefecture. This is kind of northwest of Tokyo, a snowy part of Japan. It's kind of like French toast. It's not as sweet, but it is interesting how the texture will remind of that. And it really works like a sponge to soak up that soup. And because there's sweetness in the soup coming from those sake leaves, you get that in the aburage or the fried tofu. Very interesting texture. You've got everything with the toppings here. You've got your crunchy textures coming from negi or spring onions, also the Japanese spinach and the mitsuba. And then your very soft and fluffy textures coming from the fried tofu here. And it's a good quality fried tofu. Okay, so I'm gonna finish this now and get ready for ramen bowl number two at Kazami here. And this is a different ramen from this one, so I'm expecting a completely different experience. This is their signature, but this second ramen that I'm ordering, I actually haven't ordered this here, so I'm excited. Different one, let's see what that's all about as well. Okay, soup tasting time. Completely different bowl with the soup here. And the noodles too, you can already see that they're much thinner. Now the soup here is actually four types of niboshi. This is basically dried fish, normally sardines. On top of that, they've also got katsubushi and also sababushi, which is basically dried flakes of mackerel and bonito fish. And look at that beautiful golden color there. The salt seasoning is very light and it allows those uh, fish flavors to really shine. You do have some bitterness there from the niboshi, the dried sardines, but it doesn't really you know, hit you in the face hard, let's say. It's still a very gentle, uh, refined and restrained soup. On top of that, not in the soup itself, but more of like an aroma oil. He's using a little bit of uh, chicken there. So you do kind of get this um, chicken sticky richness as well. Now, let's move on to these thin noodles. These noodles are great too. They are very thin, very delicate, which I think is a uh, you know, very wise decision because it matches more of that delicate, lighter nature of the soup here. Thin noodles go very well with it. We've got the same mitsuba for that refreshing quality, also Japanese spinach here, the delicious egg, the two cuts of chashu pork, and we can't forget that aburage or fried tofu. For me, it's very important that you appreciate the soup by itself. I usually go through half, if maybe not two thirds of the soup, then I'll add the condiment later to change up the flavor, but not in the beginning. Here we have yakumi, or condiment, is porcini mushroom, more in a sort of, um, yeah, paste form. It's a fun way to change the flavor. I'm basically gonna put in a little bit of this. I think adding that, it gives it a much more, um, you know, Western taste. Mushroom flavor shows up first, and then that's followed by, right at the very end on your tongue, the fish flavors. They work very well together, let's say. I sometimes feel like a chipmunk. I'm trying to stuff as many acorns into like both my cheeks at the same time. I think if you're coming to Kazami for the first time, I would recommend uh, going for the sake lees ramen. This is their signature dish though. The soup itself is pork bones, chicken bones, and also shellfish. And you've got nice thick noodles to mop up that richer but also sweet broth. And the other ramen that I had was the shio ramen, which is basically salt seasoned. And the soup is completely different from what I just described for the sake lees ramen. It's basically four types of niboshi or dried sardines alongside also mackerel and also bonito fish flakes. But two delicious bowls overall, I think in what is also a very unique setting. I think it's very Kyoto as the owner had envisioned. You've got a relaxing counter, almost feels like you're gonna be at a sushi shop or somewhere serving very uh, traditional Japanese cuisine, but they're serving ramen. Ginza has a lot of great ramen shops and Kazami stands tall among them. I hope you all enjoyed watching this Japan by Food ramen series video. And if that's the case, please hit that like button and also consider subscribing. Thanks a lot for tuning in and hope to see you in the next ramen series ramen video here with Japan by Food. Thanks again.